and nickels, noses, things like that. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a tough one. It really is. Uh, <clears throat> I, I do think that um, there are available, you know, some um, instruments to help with that. But beyond that, and most of the instruments that I've seen don't get into dark side issues. They don't get into them. Yeah. I think um, what's good sometimes is to uh, perhaps let the pastor pick two or three board members that they really trust. Uh, you know, you might have a board of, say, eight or ten people. Right. A pastor's not going to have an equal trusting relationship with every single one of them. Uh, we we might wish that was so. It's not so. Hmm. But usually there'll be two or three uh, really trusted people. And I think that the uh, those people and the pastor need to get away and sit down and have a conversation. Uh, you know, um, this is what we've seen in this year. Uh, in your life, uh, you know, to us, it seems like you're working too much or um, to us, sometimes it seems like you're embellishing the truth when you preach or and to have an honest conversation, you know, uh, what is driving you, that sort of thing. I think it also helps in a pastoral situation uh, to have a conversation with the spouse um, mm. and, you know, what's really happening at home. Uh, now most churches don't do this. <laughs> they just don't do it. You know, so they'll look at budget. They'll look at the increase in attendance. Uh, you know, the pastoral report. Well, I, you know, I preached 40 times this year and I did this and I did this and I did this, but, uh, no one really ever has a, a serious conversation about life and ministry the prayer life, pastor, how's your prior prayer life going? Are you praying? Are you neglecting prayer? Uh, do you have any relationships outside the church? Do you have any hobbies? Uh, you know, <clears throat> as far as I know, and the boards I've interacted with over the years, no one ever has these conversations. When I was a pastor, mm. honestly, I was a pastor for nine years and nobody ever asked me, um, are you spending enough time with your wife? Uh, how's your prayer life, pastor? Uh, you know, um, are you are you able to, you know, get some relaxing time away from the church? No one ever asked me that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I hope that, yeah, as a result of even, you know, just some of these conversations and and yeah, I'm encouraged in some ways by even the the responses, like I mentioned to some of our ECFA member surveys, there are you know, even the boards and the organizations that aren't doing these things, Gary, we're seeing more interest in it. And how do we do it? And maybe like you said, it's because of some of the awareness pieces and so on. But I was going to also tag on to what you were sharing. And I think a key question too, from a board standpoint, as they're having that conversation with the leader is to also just ask some of those open ended questions as well about what kind of support do you need? Um, because, and again, coming back to some of the survey work that we've done, the leaders that have responded to that have said, hey, you know what? It is awkward. It is awkward to bring up and say, boy, you know, I really feel like I need a sabbatical or, or I could use counseling in my life or whatever it is. It's, it can be hard for a leader to come to the board and, and feel like they're being vulnerable and ask for that level of help. But if you are one of those two to three like you say, trusted board members, if you were to ask a leader and to invite that, I just think that there could be some real, um, some real meaningful feedback that could come from the leader as a result of that. Sure. Absolutely. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more finance, governance, and fundraising news and insights for your church or ministry.